All right, starting off with a learning check. These are review questions from the heart chapters, as well as applying your blood vessel tunics, the layers. Um, here is a picture if you'd like to use this to help you um, answer these questions. All right, now we are going to talk about how we get the signal that we need to regulate blood pressure. So barrel receptors are pressure sensors. Barrel receptors detect pressure. Um, they're a type of mechanoreceptor. And they are responsible for, oh, too large there, beat to beat changes in pressure. So these are a type of mechanoreceptor. And they are going to detect pressure. In this case, blood pressure. Similar to the idea of a barometer though. So this is beat to beat control, meaning short term. There is detection occurring every single beat. So this is required for maybe large changes during um, initial exercise or um, various types of movement. And that's a bigger thing. So posture changes, so standing up, um, even moving in your seat changes blood pressure enough that we want to be able to regulate our system. So regulate heart output and blood vessel um, diameter due to these changes. And you know this from like standing up quickly, you get that head rush, lightheaded. That's if these are not working quite well enough, you want them to respond really quick. Um, you want them to be able to stand up and have your body be able to regulate blood pressure with that huge change in gravity you just induced. Um, and what these are detecting is not local changes in blood pressure, right? We're not, we don't really, for this, these guys, we don't care about what's going to what tissues. We care about what's going to the whole body. So this is regulating MAP, mean arterial pressure or MABP, same thing, right? And this makes sense for where these sensors are. So this is the location of these baroreceptors. There's a set right here on the aortic arch, and the set of them on the carotid arteries. These are aortic and carotid bodies, are little like bundles of these sensory um, receptors that connect to afferent nerves that travel to the brain and tell the brain, hey, pressure's too low or too high. Why are these the locations? Well, it really makes sense, right? We're not wanting to measure perfusion of the skeletal muscles or the digestive system. We wanna know what's coming out of the heart. So aortic arch is a pretty good place to, to take this measurement. And then carotid bodies. So these are going to the brain um, and is also still pretty close to the heart. So it's a pretty important place to monitor. Let's make sure we have um, good blood pressure go into the brain. Let's make, let's, let's do that. So these are the two places where there are these um, type of sensors called baroreceptors. They are going to change in their firing rates in response to changes in blood pressure, right? So let me draw this out for you. Um, here we go. And what this slide says, this is going to stimulate the autonomic nervous system to have the responses that we, we already know some about, right? So first let's do kind of um, a normal, MABP, MAP, that would be consistent, MABP. This is about 90. 93 is 120 over 80. Um, at this point, we have kind of a baseline firing. Firing, these are sensory neurons, right? So we're firing um, signals to where? To the vasomotor center in the medulla. Now let's say we are going to go down in pressure. So we decrease MAP. Let's say we go to about 40. What's gonna happen is we're actually going to um, decrease firing rate. So think about there's less pressure there we're gonna have lower firing, lower stimulation of the sensory neurons. 
this is going to trigger the sympathetic nervous system via the vasomotor center. So in this case, and actually I should have color coded this, let's have this be um, red. I hope that's what I have, I think it is on the next slide. Vasomotor center, in this case, we're gonna have sympathetic nervous system activate. This is gonna cause vasoconstriction. Does that make sense? Why, if we had low blood pressure, we wanna have vasoconstriction, hopefully. We're also at the same time gonna have um, via the um, cardiac acceleratory center, increased heart rate and contractility. Those also help to counteract the slow blood pressure. Okay, what if we have increased blood pressure? So let's say we go to 120. This is going to increase firing. This signal is going to um, trigger the vasomotor center. In this case, we are going to um, inhibit it. And in, instead, we're going to trigger the parasympathetic nervous system, which is going to do what? We are going to decrease the slope of that depolarization. We're gonna decrease heart rate and we're going to contribute to vasodilation. It's really not constrict. So we're going to have opening dilation, which I can never spell. Of where? Vasodilation, right? These are the arterioles that we're talking about. Okay. Um, I have, I'm going to show you this in a, another diagram that's kind of nice because it shows kind of the aortic pressure um, changes. This is, right, here's a dichrotic notch. This would be 80 over 120 typically, right? And we've got this surge and decline. This is actually what this looks like. So at normal baseline blood pressure, we've got this baseline firing, but it does kind of come and go um, with those changes in pressure. Um, then as we go down in blood pressure, we've got decreased firing. This is gonna activate the sympathetic nervous system. And then the other direction, that increase in blood pressure is going to result in increased firing. We stimulating that receptor results in increased in activation of the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, yeah. Okay, let's draw this out. So what does this look like? And actually I'm going to do it just on here. There we go. Okay, so you've seen this before. Let's do the response to low blood pressure. You should do this in your notes not official learning check, but do this, try to do it before I tell you the answer right now, before I do it. Low blood pressure. This is gonna stimulate baroreceptors. Stimulus, um, sensor, and gonna travel via, it's actually the vagus and glossopharyngeal nerves. Um, Shield, sensory afferent nerves to go to the vasomotor center of the medulla, our integrator. We're actually going to have a synapse in the spinal cord. So this is all part of the integrator here. We've got a preganglionic neuron. So this is our ganglia. So this is kind of some, some detail here thinking about the neurons, preganglionic. Okay, what's this then? This is going to be our effector or target the blood vessels. The response is going to be vasoconstriction. This is going to result in, actually let's do this right, increasing blood pressure to counteract our stimulus. And you should be able to label the components here. Um, fine, I'll do it. Stimulus, 
receptor or sensor, input signal. Remember this, this whole thing is integrator. And then we've got our output signal, is this whole thing, our target or effector, and our response. This same pathway is going to also stimulate the cardio acceleratory center to result in increased heart rate and increased contractility via the sympathetic nervous system. This output signal, so this is sympathetic. Response to high blood pressure would look similar. Um, we would have vagus nerve as the output signal. And then of course, our, we would have vasodilation instead of vasoconstriction. So not the first time you've seen this, right? Seen this last semester as well? Okay, a learning check. Thinking about blood loss and I'm telling you what happens to blood pressure and what would happen in response to this.